Thursday on FS1. Carly Lloyd. What a goal from Lloyd. Crystal Dunn. Alex Morgan. Go, go Morgan. And the U.S. women's national team face off against Japan, Brazil, and defending champion Australia. The Tournament of Nations USA Brazil. Thursday at 8.30 Eastern on FS1. Welcome back into the studio. I'm Kitty Witham alongside the former U.S. Women's National Team midfielder Leslie Osborne. Let's get to the first half. The whole game highlights, actually, where we're going to start in the first half. This was the 17th minute. And who other than Alex Morgan to get this one going? Yeah, Alex Morgan turns and faces, sees a Megner Pino running inside. Pino takes a great first touch, tries to bend it far post, just gets too much on it. And it goes wide, but a good start here from the U.S. Five minutes later, Australia on the counterattack, and this was not what the U.S. wanted to see. Oh, and there's a sub coming in. Lisa Devanna starting for the Australia so fast. Physical takes the whole U.S. team on and finds Lagarza running through the back line. Morgan Bryan trying to trap that, but look at her. She's so fast. She's so explosive. 1v1 just plays that simple ball, and all Lagarzo has to do is finish near post. What a composed, nice finish there by Australia and gets the U.S. Let's jump ahead to the second half, 70th minute, and who other than Megan Rapino? Well, yeah, this is why we love Megan Rapino. She takes advantage of any of those little opportunities and spaces she has, and she rips a shot with a lot of swerve on it. 90th minute and uh, Megan Rapino. You, we talked all throughout this game how good she was. How'd she make it happen here? It was so good. She should have played these balls in the back of the net more often, and Lindsay Graham just finishes it. With hey, speaking of Megan Rapino, <laughs> let's talk to her, shall we? Megan, congratulations. Hi. Katie and Leslie here with you. Uh, listen, this was a tough game, and it was not maybe the way that you guys thought it was going to go or wanted it to go, but you were able to get the draw, walk away with a point. How did this one play out from your perspective? Uh, you know, I actually thought performance-wise, I, I thought we played pretty well. We had a lot of chances, uh, exposed them quite a bit in the wide areas, we were able to switch the ball quite a bit. Um, we had some really good chances. It was, I had a major shank city in the first half, <laughs> unreal. <laughs> I'm never going to live that one down. <laughs> um, but I felt like we were getting chances. It was just kind of coming. Obviously, we want to, you know, put more away, but um, these are the kind of games that we're going to see, you know, into qualifying and obviously into the World Cup next year. So. Um, I mean, I love these games. I wish, obviously, that we would have won, but a uh, competitive environment and a great stadium tonight. So uh, it, was a, it was a good match for us, and I think good on, good on a lot of ways, good performance, and sort of good preparing us going forward. Megan, did Australia surprise you in any way, or is this what you expected? Um, kind of what we expected. We know they're tough. Um, they're, they're one of the few teams, I think, that can really match us physically. Um, in terms of strength and just kind of the style that they play. They can get up and down the field. Obviously, Sam Kerr is just unbelievable. Um, she's always a handful to deal with. Um, so I feel like there's not many teams that can do that. So we got to find other ways to break them down and, uh, you know, get around them and, and play through them more so. Yep. Knowing you need points, next up Brazil, what's going to be the team focus in training the next few days? Uh, rest, rest, rest. That would be my focus. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll game plan Brazil. Um, they play a little bit different style, a little bit more man marking. So um, our passing needs to be really crisp, and we're going to have to move the ball very, uh, very good against them. Otherwise, they'll be able to take advantage of us. Always Marta, keep an eye on her. Uh, she's still the GOAT, so we've got to keep an eye on her. Megan, thank you so much for taking the time and for getting a result here today. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, guys. Bye-bye. The United States will look to clinch the tournament in the final match against Brazil, which we are going to have for you right here on FS1 this Thursday. Coverage begins at 8.30 p.m. Eastern as that one kicks off from Toyota Park in Bridgeview, Illinois. But today, for some late drama for U.S. fans at Pratt & Whitney Stadium in East Hartford, Connecticut, don't go anywhere. We still have plenty more analysis to come. A side that wants more space Cause every day starts like a race You got a side that loves that style But to fit in those shoes Gonna take a while Today life's got you running Tomorrow big things are coming That's why Nationwide is on your side 
It looks like a bubble, plays like a ball. Introducing the strongest wobble ball of them all. It's Super Wobble. We invented Expandium, the strongest, stretchiest wobble material ever. Expandium is better at resisting punctures and tears and keeps Super Wobble squishy, bouncy fun everywhere. It's Super Smashable. Wait, did that just happen? Every Super Wobble comes with quick patches so you can keep on playing. Do it all with the Super Wobble Bubble Ball. Batteries not included, must be 18 years or older to order. Well, looking ahead to this summer, the U.S. will look to defend their title at the Women's World Cup in France. But the four years between the World Cups, a lot can change. And this year, there could be a new threat to worry about. USA, we're coming for you. Ooh, that was Spain's Vicky Lozada with a warning for the U.S. women's national team. But well, I think we have a style and a personality that is gonna is gonna make a big difference in the next um, World Championship. There's also Lika Martins from the Netherlands. FYI, she is the reigning World Player of the Year. And since the round of 16 exit in Vancouver, the Dutch have only gotten better, winning the 2017 Euros on home soil. Every single time we, when we come back together at the national team, we feel we we growing as well. So. Of course, we put the standard high. So you got to wonder, how big is the gap between the U.S. women and the rest of the world? I think we have closed it a little bit, but still, like, the U.S. is, is I think, the biggest one in the world. I think the gap is um, smaller, but we still have a lot to do. Spain, the Netherlands, the U.S., all hoping to be at the World Cup. We are now 313 days away from the FIFA Women's World Cup in France, of course. We'll have every second of the action for you right here on the Fox Family of Networks. But today, the U.S. escape with a draw thanks to a Lindsay Horan goal. And when we return, we're going to have a preview of the final match of the tournament. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Oh, good to see our friends Keith Costigan and Ian Joy. We're going to be looking forward to that game. Well, the U.S. women steal a point against Australia in East Hartford, Connecticut, thanks to that powerful stoppage time header from Lindsey Horan. They left it late, but the U.S. have life heading into their final match against Brazil. Katie Witham back with Leslie Osborne. And Leslie, one final thought on this match before we start to look ahead. We've got to talk Australia's Sam Kerr. We didn't talk about her at all throughout this game. Is that a credit to the U.S.? Yeah, it's definitely positive. I think the U.S. did a great job organizationally in the back line. Becky Sauerborn and Abby Dahlkamper and the players around her, making sure they knew where she was. She loves to slip between those lines and scenes, and they control that really well. However, I think it opened up opportunity for more play from Razo, from De Lula Garzo. Those players did have more opportunities, so I think it's a positive to take out one of the best players in the world, but it opened up more opportunities for Australia. Definitely something for the U.S. to work on yeah. moving into Brazil. Let's talk about Brazil. That's the next game, the final game, a much different side than what you are accustomed to seeing from an Australia team. How can the U.S. take advantage? Well, they're confident right now. They had a good response against Japan tonight, but they're so vulnerable in the box. Barbara comes out fishing, gave up a few goals on that, and Poliana, their center back, she's young. She's not quite sure, adapted to the style, so the U.S. have to take advantage on set pieces, and Brazil does not want to be physical, so the U.S. has to bring their physicality to this game and pay attention to Marta. She's still world class. She now is a playmaker, so she's setting up Dabinia, and she's just so good the U.S. have to pay attention to her, but now she's also got some partners with her to help her in the attack. So quickly, because we are running out of time, you are a midfielder. That's always a focus. What can the midfielders do better? Well, I think there's a lot of moving pieces, a lot of different personnel to shore up. We had McCall. A lot of players are getting new minutes, so making sure they're going into a game plan against Brazil and executing, especially in the midfield with all that technical players. All right. Well, we will have the United States final match against Brazil right here for you on FS1 this Thursday. Coverage begins at 8.30 p.m. Eastern as that one kicks off from Toyota Park in Bridgeview, Illinois. What a finish tonight for the U.S. women's national team as they equalize at death against an impressive Australia side. A goal from Chloe Lagarzo was almost the difference maker, but Lindsay Horan's sixth international goal means we will have to wait for the last match to crown this year's Tournament of Nations champions. That's it for us today. For Leslie Osborne, JP Delacamera, and Allie Wagner, I'm Katie Witham. We'll see you on Thursday.